What did a school teacher say that stuck with you? You have unlimited potential when you know how to find the first step. My teacher told me that I had a beautiful soul and mind, which I took as meaning that I was fugly and was being pitied, but later on realized that it was her way of showing me special attention because I was an introverted loner. This reminds me of a science teacher I had who would do a little pre-exam ritual thingy to help ease anxiety and help students focus. She would turn off the lights and have everyone relax and close their eyes, put their head on their arms on the table etc. And play calming ocean sounds from her computer while walking around the classroom calming taking to us. She basically would start with saying to take deep breaths, think about your favorite place to relax, and recognize that we are all living, breathing, emotional human beings capable of love and care and with hobbies or skills outside of the course we were taking, that the exam was a simple measure to see what you have learned, not to see how smart you are, or how good you are with the topic at hand, that the outcome of the test had no impact on who you are as a human and doubtful that it highlights our best skills or areas of expertise. The first time I experienced this, like any high schooler my initial thought was okie lady, whatever but holy shit did it help. I remember one time in particular when I was struggling with the course and about to take an exam while she did this she stopped and calmly rested her hand on my shoulder for a moment while my head was down and seriously thought I was going to break out crying. I felt like she was in my corner rooting for me at a point where I was struggling and I will never forget it. All through the rest of high school and university I would rethink and try to relive that ritual before exams and it helped me big time. Easily one of the best teachers I have ever had. I once asked my teacher something about the subject, and she said, I don't know, but I'll do some research and get back to you tomorrow. One time one of my elective classes was just kind of chilling out the day before winter break and the teacher decided to arrange all our desks in a circle. He had everyone anonymously write something that was troubling them at the moment and he would go through and give some advice. I wrote about my parents' constant fighting and how I feared their inevitable divorce and the possibility of moving across country with my mother. I wish I could remember what he said but I vividly remember almost crying because what he said hit so hard but I kept it together. Less than a month later, both things happened LMAO. They may forget what you said, but they will never forget how you made them feel. Being wise is better than being smart. I held on to that right up till receiving my PhD. Now that I'm entrenched in the corporate world of merciless exploitation, I've realized being smart about life is really a subset of being wise. Don't bullshit the bullshitter. Mr. Bird 2005 Had a history teacher who told me that everything is relative. You can only be poor if someone next to you is rich. You're only stupid if someone next to you is smart. It helps to put things into perspective and realize how superficial a lot of things are in life. That being said, he also randomly told me that wolves are badass dogs that don't give a shit when we were not talking about wolves or dogs in class so who knows what was really going on in his head. First day off science class. Many of the topics I will be teaching you this year will likely be proven false throughout your life. Biology teacher. Pointing at student, ugly bag of protein, full of water. Ended every class with your good people. You're a spoon in a knife block when asked why most of my friends were high achievers and I was only average. Ever tried to eat ice cream with a knife? You're useful in your own way bro keep it up. I know what it is to be young but you don't know what it is to be old. I don't know why and how it came up. But our English teacher asked me if I understand that. It was the first year and I was 10. And I definitely did not understand. But it somehow stuck in my mind as the sound of the sentence. Until I could decipher the memory in retrospect. Once you're an adult, you choose your own fate. Your mom won't control you anymore. This came from a 9th grade Algebra 1 teacher who took the time to tutor me. My mom was, is a anti-vaxxing, cult-following nutbag who didn't think school was important because Armageddon is coming. I was terrible at math until I met him. It's been 25 years and I think of this teacher still. I am grateful. Don't talk to mom anymore. She got tired of me asking where Armageddon was. I had a maths teacher who was an older woman, really strict and nobody particularly liked her. We mocked her way of speaking and were generally mean teenage assholes. Once, 
When I was around 15, I hadn't finished my homework so I dropped my book in a puddle and showed it to her in class to say I'd lost the homework so couldn't hand it in. She questioned me a bit on how it had happened, then asked me to stay after class. The whole lesson I was shitting myself, expecting to be absolutely bollocked once everyone else had gone. So when the bell rang I sheepishly went up and sat at her desk after everyone had left. To my surprise, she didn't shout at me but gently asked if I was being bullied and somebody had taken my workbook and ruined it on purpose. I was a little skinny kid with glasses and braces, so I can see why she would have thought that, but in that moment I suddenly saw her as a human being with feelings and empathy and not just a teacher. I felt like shit for the way I had treated her, and for lying about what had happened. I never admitted it to her, just reassured her that I was fine, but it did stick with me and I was much less of a dick to teachers after that. He said with rage, you used to be one of the good ones. Did he say this after he chopped off your legs and left you to die on Mustafar? It's okay, you can smile. This was first thing our middle school music teacher, who we all loved, said on his first day back after his wife, an art teacher many of us had in elementary, was killed in a car accident. He made music class a lot of fun, and we'd missed him in the week he took off after his wife's death. He was used to coming into a room full of smiling faces, ready for another fun hour of class. We were all sitting utterly silent, fixed on him with what I'm sure were the most somber little faces he'd ever seen. He smiled at us after he said it, and we all smiled back, and he thanked us for it. I'm FB friends with several of my old teachers. I once wrote about how I had the recurring nightmare of being in my chemistry teacher's class and having to take an exam but not having studied for it. He replied saying that his recurring nightmare is my being in his class. After being caught smoking pot in high school 1986, my science teacher High Mr. Fishbein said to me, there is a time and place for everything, this is not the time, nor the place. He did not report me to administration. He was a great teacher. Professor Oak said the same thing when I tried to fish in the Pokemon Center. What do they call someone who graduated vet school with a 2.0 GPA? Doctor. My first term anatomy professor in vet school telling us to stop fretting so much about the grades and worry about the knowledge. One day in 7th grade our principal came into the homeroom class and wrote on the board $19.32 in big numbers. He got our attention and announced to the class. This pointing at the number is what you are worth. Every day you come to class. The school gets $19.32 from the state for each of you. So if you are sick, you should still come to class. Go to the nurse. And get sent home. That way the school will still get its $19.32. That was the day I stopped caring about school. I'm pretty sure he was trying to increase attendance and believed what he said was positive. But when a person you're supposed to respect tells you you're worth less than a $20 bill. I thought this was gonna be motivational at first. Teachers like marking your homework as much as you like doing homework. So, just don't do the homework. Makes life easier for everybody. Just get a f***ing haircut I kept complaining during PE that my hair was in my face. This was one of those teachers that felt more like one of the boys than the teacher. Blew my mind hearing him swear. In French class in high school over 20 years ago. Part of the lesson was going over some sentences in French. She pointed one out in particular. I go to school on the bus. My horrible attempt at typing it was something like Je viens à l'école en bus I understand I've probably triggered people who speak French. I apologize. I remember vividly the teacher saying, for some reason, this is the only French any of my students ever remember after they're done with this class. Here I am, two plus decades removed from that class in the 90s, and that's the only French I remember. In my senior year we had a dinner at school. There was a very long queue for the desserts. So I went and asked a history teacher where it started. Because I couldn't find it it was pretty chaotic. The teacher proceeded to put an arm around me. Walked me to the desserts table. And say Ray my boy. F*** the queue. I took Latin all four years of high school. I quickly realized I despised the language. But I stuck with it for the teacher himself. He alone was worth it. Our Latin class was right above the hallway with classrooms for special needs kids. One day. After it was apparent nobody did their homework. My teacher stopped class and said, you're all taking what you have for granted, and it's inexcusable. There are several dozen kids in the hallway below you who wish they had the mental faculties to do homework. I did my Latin homework regularly after he said that. 
A good mathematician is a lazy mathematician, as the lazier they are the more time and effort they put into finding the easiest solution. Laziness is the driving force behind all innovation. Hard work only makes you tired. He gave me this nickname. My friends still call me Bianjo one five years later. Have I been respectful to you? Me. Well. Yeah. Are you being respectful to me? Simple words. They have guided me so much. My geometry teacher was super chill. He taught us to play poker and blackjack. On the last day of school he said, Remember, if you ever need anything or have any questions while you're at this school, there are about 50 other teachers you should go to before you come to me.